Hey everyone, welcome to another Common UI tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the lazy widget and the lazy image. Now, both of their functionalities are actually relatively simple in the sense that there's not a lot of events and different use cases to use them in. Uh, their functionality is very simple in the sense that what they do is both of them set a default image so that if you're ever trying to load other images and, and or widgets, it will go to that default image and populate that until the widget has loaded. So it's kind of like a loading screen for images and widgets in a sense. So that's basically what they do. So if you're ever loading up a game and things take a while to load, you can actually set that or you could set it to nothing or you could even set like an event so that if it's not loading, then do this. Um, and that's about all of their functionalities. But I'll go into it to showcase to you. And yeah, let's get into it. So let's go ahead and showcase you what a lazy widget and a lazy image can do. Now I kind of explained like the brief overview, essentially what it does, it provides a image before it loads any type of image or widget. Both of the common UI lazy widget and images will display an image if they can't load. It wouldn't really make sense to try to load an, a widget if it can't load a widget. That doesn't really make a lot of sense in anybody's eyes, so you can't really do that if it's struggling to load. It's essentially like a buffer in between loading so that if it's not loading, then you can populate something in the meantime. So that's, I've, it's the purpose of a loading screen. I don't think I have to explain the basis of a loading screen, but it's helpful to inform the user of what's happening instead of just nothing appearing or maybe just like a weird unloaded texture appears. So let's go ahead and showcase what it can do. Now to briefly explain before I start this, is we can only see it at the beginning of the game because I don't really have a performance intensive game. Clearly, this is just the default thing. So we can only see it when we're loading the screen. But what we should see is that we're going to see this image right here that we're seeing, that weird black TV screen. And then once we load, we will see it flip between other images and widgets. So when we hit standalone game right now, it's gonna take a second to load, but what we should see is that it's gonna struggle to load because it's struggling to load. We're gonna see that default background and then it's gonna load the widgets. So when we start off here, we're gonna see those default images and then it switches to the widgets. So that is perfect. That is what we want to see. I'm gonna do that one more time just in case you guys need to see it. It's very, very simple concept. There's not a lot going on, but I want to make sure that you guys at least understand what it can do uh, as well as when to use it. So there we go. It starts loading. Perfect. That is all we needed to see. The default is in fact loading. So right now what I created um, is just changing the image and the widget. I could have put this like on a loop, but I just figured for documentation purposes, it's just a lot easier to look at at this moment. Now, all of this is documented and it is in my Patreon, so it is available there where you can actually download the entire project of everything that I create regarding Common UI. And all it is is that we're going to create something very similar to this, which I just showed you. Uh, which will have all the functionalities of showcasing the widget and the image. So let's go ahead and create our own instead of using this one. We're going to go into a brand new folder that I just called lazy. We're going to go into widgets and we're going to grab the common user widget. We don't need an activatable widget for this because I'm not really going to showcase how to activate it. But if you wanted to create an actable, activatable widget, you absolutely can. So we're going to call this UI lazy. And then in here, we're going to kind of replicate exactly what I just built in the other one. Uh, what I want is I want to put the widget on top of the image. So there's a lazy image, lazy widget. So um, I know I'm going to say the word lazy a lot, but just try to um, remember that there are two different ones and they're basically called similar things that I get tongue twisted all the time. 
So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a vertical box. This is so that I can stack uh, top to bottom. And then we're also gonna get a horizontal because this is going to be for the lazy images, which are gonna be left or right. Uh, so we're gonna type lazy. And we'll notice for common UI plugin, we have both of them here. This is the other one that I created and that's why it's just called that. But nonetheless, let's grab this image. We're gonna put it into the horizontal box. And then the widget is going to go into the vertical box. Put that on top. Let's rename this because I hate seeing the numbers so intensely. We're gonna call that one. And then we're gonna go one, two. I don't know why that failed us right there. So we're gonna do three and move that over here. And we're gonna call this lazy widget. And then from here, hit that fill button. And we're gonna just give a padding of like 20. Oh, let's also do fill on these two and also 20. So right then and there, we've now added a lazy widget and a lazy image. Of course, we haven't done anything yet. So for the lazy widget, what you will be doing is in the beginning, you'll notice that we have appearance and it has literally nothing else except one event down here. I'll go into the event later, but as of this moment, um, all you can do from the detail panel is to only set what the default brush is going to be. So this is going to be the image that will load if the widget never loads or it takes a while to load. So for the image, we're going to go ahead and grab that image that I have stored somewhere around here. And we're going to just grab that weird TV screen looking thing uh, that I don't really know what to call. So that is gonna be our default brush. I mean, you have all the other stuff. You can do images, sizes, tint, uh, draw it as whatever you would like, and then tiling, of course, whatever you would want to do. Very simple stuff. That's, and that's all we can do here. So let's move on to the lazy images. So for here, I'm just gonna highlight all of them. Uh, now for the load preview, it just shows whether they you're gonna display the either loading or um, the actual brush. So there's the background loading one, which is just like basically the loading screen. And then you have the actual brush. So it just kind of goes between that. It doesn't have some actual real use case for us. It's just an in editor use only. So for here, we have one other field. And that is because we now have either the loading background and then we have the brush. So we're gonna go ahead and set that. We got our background brush selected, and then we'll just do this one, which is going to be the 3D platformer image that I utilize for literally everything because it's like the only good image I have. And that would be all that we need to do here. It has all the other image capabilities. You just have the ability to set a um, loading one. Now you'll also notice that we don't have a widget for this one yet. And that is because you actually have to set a widget. So it doesn't load one automatically upon start, but you could make it do that, but it requires going into the pre-construct. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to a lazy widget and drag off. And I think it's, uh, let's type in lazy because that will give us everything that's under the lazy content. And then it also gives us stuff for lazy image. So it has the same event as lazy image. So that's why you see it there. But you have the ability to either get the content or set lazy content. So you can set it or we can content, get content. What it'll do is this will get you the current widget that is set there. So if you ever need to get the widget, you can grab it through here, or you could do like a function and do like, um, uh, like a local variable to grab the content and use that throughout the function and be a lot easier. So from here, what we would be able to do is we can then set a widget. So we can grab any of the other widgets that I've created before. So let's go ahead and grab like the level select and we'll hit compile. So what we'll do is that for here, uh, under image, you want to go into the widget class and then select the current widget that we created. 
Uh, this is just a actor that has the widget component. So it's nothing crazy that I created. I just created a actor and then I added a component for a widget and I set it to <laughs> this widget. So we'll hit play and then we now see the level select is up there. Granted, the level select is not the best use case to use right now because it actually takes my focus. Uh, so I can't actually move right now, but nonetheless, you do see it there. So for here, let's actually go back. Let's close that because we don't need to go there anymore. But that does show us how we can set a widget. Now, the next thing that is actually really great about this is because for lazy widgets and lazy images is they use soft references. So it's a lot less um, performance because um, of that soft reference, well, as a hard reference, just has more stuff stored. So it's actually really great for that. And that's why there's a really great use case for using it is because the goal is to have less performance and happy face for everybody. Images is basically the same thing as what an image would be. So you would just set brush. And then you have under lazy image, you have the ability to set the image. You do have the ability to set brush for other things. So you still have the original stuff if you wanted to set brush and then you can make, and then you can add a brush asset, whatever you wanna do. You have the ability to do that. But the nice thing is those soft references. So if we went to set lazy texture or set brush to material, set brush, display asset. You have the ability to grab lazy objects, lazy materials, as well as lazy textures. And really all these are materials, textures, and objects. They're just called lazy because it is the widget. But if you hover on top of it, it says a soft object reference. It's super helpful in that matter. And then you also have the ability to set it to match the texture size. So that's how easy it would be to change. The only thing I don't like about setting the brush is that in order to do this, you would have to actually have a texture and plug it in. You can't just do this and click on one because it's a it's just the way that it is. <laughs> so if you wanted to do that, you'd have to promote this to a variable. We have a texture and then under this texture compile, you can then set a texture to whatever we want here. So now that I set that to key dark, it will actually change the texture as we see over here. So we see that it changes to zero instead of the original brush that I set. And then I believe if I disconnect that, it goes back to normal. So that's what a lazy image can do. I've already showcased what you can do with changing them. Uh, for the widget, it would be the same thing. You could actually go into um, lazy widget. And then let's do that delay again. Oop, can't even spell delay. And we'll do one second and we'll copy that. And we'll do this one more time and we'll plug that all the way over here again. So it's just gonna go in a loop and we'll change that to the carousel. And then from here, we'll be able to just watch them change. And that's how easy that it is. It will just continuously cycle now, the one thing that you'll notice is they're not actually going on the correct time. Uh, they're kind of like staggered. I'm not sure why it does that in the editor, but when I actually start it in the standalone game that you'll see in a second, they do actually load at the exact same time and then they cycle through together. It's just some weird thing that seems to be happening in the editor and can't seem to find the reason on why that is the case. But when we go to standalone game, Oh, they're actually not going at the same time. That's interesting. It was doing that earlier. So it could be because they're all widgets and they're all pre-constructing differently. Or maybe it's because I ran it on the pre-construct um, instead of construct. So what if I did this? Let's find out.
kind of sidetracked on what we were originally talking about, but figured, hey, if I'm having this thought, let's have it recorded. All right. Nope, it looks like they're still off a little. Hmm, that's interesting. If anybody has a clear explanation, I'd love to hear it. I'll probably do some research on my own. I didn't have it doing that earlier, but to be fair, you wouldn't really want to have things load like this anyways. Typically, if you're trying to activate like three things at once, you're probably gonna like grab all the widgets in like a loop. So you would do like a loop for each loop and then you can then just go through and then set the lazy image or the brush like this and you can go through doing that. But that is what you can do for setting a texture, setting a widget. You can also do something like a custom event, change widget. For the lazy widget, you could grab this. I'm gonna disconnect everything. Grab this and then plug it in. And then from there, whenever you call this, um, this widget, you can then call this event and then change whatever widget is assigned. So like if you wanted to change widget, you can then change it to whatever you want and get a reference. So if I was like in the player controller and I was like, hey, I wanna now push the um, button menu, you can then push the button menu as such. So just typical UI stuff and communication that you can go about doing. Super helpful. Hope this was educational as well as, um, yeah, I don't know, educational. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button, join the Patreon, Discord, all the self-promo stuff. Have a good day.